welcome to the part two for video number three on the Canon EOS 60D, looking at the flash control menu still. Um, in this video I do recommend viewing it full screen if you can, and um, that way you can see the menu items on both the flash, or at least the display on the flash, and the menu items on the camera at the same time. I've had to pull the camera away to get them both in the shot. Um, I was going to put the flash on another light stand, but I have run out of them. They're all being used. Okay, so the external speed light as we see here mounted on the 60D. Okay, what we have, and we can now go into the external flash function settings here because it's now got a flash attached, it recognizes that. And we can change modes such as um, ETTL, auto manual, I mean, as you will see, if I can turn the light on on that, the flash is currently on ETTL there. And when I kick it to manual, the flash has now changed to manual and at the manual power setting that it was last set at, which is half power plus two thirds. That's what the 0 0.07 means. So it's one third of a stop away from full power. Okay, we'll go back to TTL for the moment. And we have here now an additional option for the shutter sync. We have first curtain and second curtain, like I explained earlier. And we also have high speed sync. Now when you're dealing with flash you have a sync speed limit which is the max shutter speed you can use when shooting with flash. Uh, many cameras sit around the 200th of a second mark. The 60D in particular has a 250th of a second sync speed. Now high speed sync allows you to go beyond that okay, without um, getting the second curtain of the shutter because the shutter has two curtains. One curtain opens then the, the second one follows without getting that in the way of the picture and giving you a black feathered edge or even a black solid bar on your image. Now normally um, you will get that black bar if you go past your sync speed. Now with an on camera flash it won't let you do that. With an off camera flash with manual triggers you can do that and that's where it can cause you problems. Now high speed sync does need to have a Canon flash or a Canon ETTL high speed sync compatible flash either mounted on the camera um, connected via ETTL cable or um, connected via expensive um, ETTL high speed sync capable um, wireless triggers like Foltix Odin's or some of the Pocket Wizard series of triggers as well. And what high speed sync allows you to do is crank your shutter speed all the way up to 8,000th of a second should you wish to to control more ambient light uh, whilst you're using flash and what the flash has to do is actually pulse burst. Now, with it having to pulse multiple times, it cannot do that on full power because obviously it has to recycle, recharge before it can fire again. So, high speed sync kills a lot of power. I personally rarely use it um, because it really limits you, you have to work really close. Okay, so exposure compensation here. We have exposure compensation, which is again TTL telling the flash whatever you give me, give me less, give me more for the flash as it's attached to the camera. We have evaluative and average metering, just like we did with the inbuilt flash. Okay, and we can also whoops, zoom the flash head. Okay, automatic zoom will zoom towards it to match your focal length and sensor format size. And you might be able to hear it there. And we can tell it to zoom all the way with this Canon 430 EX2 to 105 millimeters. Okay, as you can see, high speed sync's enabled on the flash. With exposure compensation icon there, zoom to 105mm in ETTL. Um, now this flash does have custom function symbol on there, that's nothing necessarily to do with what's set in the camera, it's the custom functions I've set on the flash. I do have a video on my channel looking at this um, particular flash in some detail, so I will stick an annotation on there for you. Okay, now what we'll do, we'll go up to manual mode, again remember this is with the on camera flash, Whilst this is more powerful, it will give you a little bit better light than the inbuilt flash. It's still in the wrong place, but we can use bounce flash should we wish to, because the head on the 430, 430 EX2 and the 580 series flashes, as well as the 600s, can be turned and, <coughs> turned and rotated. Okay, now for the manual flash, we have very, very basic options really. We can change the power of the flash here. Oh, excuse me, if I change that down to about a quarter of the power. You can see the display on the flash there, I'll just turn that light on, has changed to a quarter of a power. 
to match, we can change the shutter sync, whether it's going to be high speed or second curtain sync, first curtain sync, and of course we can zoom the flash, whoops, else if we go the other way, to wherever we want that to be. You can of course come up to the flash and do those on the back of the flash as well. Okay, so that's just a look at some of the uh, external flash function settings. So what we'll do now, external flash custom function settings. Now, this is neat because it's new on the later generation EOS bodies. I don't think the likes of the 30D, 40D had this, I'm not sure. But normally when you go into the custom function settings on this flash, it just gives you a load of number values and doesn't really explain what they correlate to and which options they're doing. It's either custom function 1 with a 0 for off and a 1 for on. And you're like, OK, you need the manual. So at least with this, with the flash connected, you can now visually see what these custom functions are. And this is why you see the CFN symbol on my speed light there. So auto power off disabled, uh, modeling flash disabled, that thing sucks. It just strobes a flash to act as a modeling light and damn near gives people epileptic fits. Okay. Test fire with auto flash either give 130 second power or full power output. I choose 130 second power so it saves battery. I mean, your, my, your flash may be slightly different depending on what model that you've got. AF assist beam firing, which is beams inbuilt into the flash on the front of it to help auto focus in low light. So you can set these custom functions um, according to what custom functions you're allowed to move, change, and set on your speed light. Like I say, these will differ depending on what speed light you use. Okay. And obviously, we can clear all custom function settings should we wish to set the flash back to default factory. So that just finishes off the flash control menu. Okay, I will, like I say, do separate videos when looking at using the inbuilt flash, um, the wireless function more so in particular, and to control an external speed light a little bit later on. Let's get through these menus first, and then we'll come back and have a look at those at a later date for you. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below, chuck me an email, and don't forget to check out newtofoto.com and the Newtofoto YouTube channel. Okay, and I will catch you guys in the next video.